I was telling you about. Oh, hey, we're back with the Five Star News. I'm Jackson Martin. This is Keller Cumbie. Yes, and today we will see what the junior class representatives wants to do for our prom plans. We will also dig deeper into the Young Georgia Authors Competition. And we will also preview Southeast Whitfield for the girls and boys basketball games this Friday. All that and more coming up next in the Five Star News. Welcome into the Five Star News, everyone, and let's go ahead and get started with our announcement portion of the show. Yes, Jackson, and I've been wondering what the weather is going to be like since it has been so cold lately. So here is Luke Bussey and Cameron Smith with What's Up Heritage. Whoa, 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 what's up, Heritage? My name's Luke Bussey. Let me get you caught up on what's going on around our school. So, Saturday, there will be a senior trip to Stone Mountain where the seniors will be going snow tubing. I'm going. I'm looking forward to having a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to beating everyone in it. Also, Monday, January 27th, my birthday, there will be a governance team meeting. So if you're on the governance team, be sure to attend. Also, Tuesday, the 28th, the contestants list for the GHSA literary team are due. That is all. Let me send it to my man, Cameron Smith, for your weather. All right, thanks, Luke, for getting us caught up on what's up. Now, on to your bi-weekly five-day weather forecast. Okay, so Friday, you're not going to be saying, hey, y'all, like outcast. It's more like, oh, no, like overcast. With the high being 53 degrees, a low of 37 degrees, with a 90% chance of rain. Saturday, you will have a high of 46, a low of 31, with a 10% chance of rain. Sunday, you will be having an uptrend of the high with 51, a low of 35, with a 10% chance of rain. Monday, you will have a high of 53, a low of 34, with a 20% chance of rain. And Tuesday, to round off your five-day weather forecast, we'll have a high of 54, a low of 40, with a 10% chance of rain. Now back to you guys. Thanks for keeping us up to date on our announcements and weather for next week. Hey, Keller, have you entered the Young Georgia Authors Competition? Yes, Jackson, because my teacher mentioned something to me about it. Have you? No, but I've heard all about how it's beneficial to, for students here at Heritage. Well, let's just send it over to Isaiah Lewis and Ariana Camp with all the details on the story. Hi, my name is Morgan Trotter, and I will be entering the Young Georgia's Writer Competition. Um, I am entering my poem, and it's called Our Roses. Um, it's about a 50-line poem, and I wrote it in the fall semester um, for one of our writing projects in Mr. Whited's room, and I walked into Mr. Whited's room a few days ago for lunch, and he tapped the board, and he goes, um, you're entering this, and I said, okay. So um, I'm entering, and I know that the deadline is February 6th. Uh, it's a Thursday at 4 p.m., so if you're interested, get it in by then. Um, Students, it's that time of year again that you've all been waiting for, the time of year for the Young Georgia Authors Competition, or as they call it on the streets, YGAC. Uh It's big, big fun uh, every year. Uh, let me give you a little bit of information about it. Uh, you can enter all types of different writing, um, poetry, you can do academic pieces, you can do narratives or short stories. Um, journalistic pieces there's all kinds of different types of entries um, and it's likely that a lot of you have already done some of this stuff anyway for your uh, literature classes you may have something in your google drive or stuffed in a folder somewhere that you could submit uh, maybe just pull it back out dust it off and give it a little bit of uh, edit and revision Okay, so I'm entering the new writing competition, and I'm very excited to see if I can win anything or win a scholarship, but I'm in AP Lang this semester, fourth block with Cosby, and she told me to enter my epitaph poem, and so I'm going to do that, and hopefully it can get put in before Thursday, February the 6th, so that I can see if I win. Hey, Kayla, you know prom is coming up really soon. Are you ready? Not at all, Jackson. What about you? No, but I'm excited for it. Yeah, me too, but it can be stressful. So let's send it over to Destiny Rhodes and James Walton to see all the details on prom this year. 
All right, Heritage High School, it's prom time. This year it's at the Chattanooga Convention Center. The date is April 18th. No, it's not. Yes, it is April 18th. It's coming very, very quickly. If you want to purchase your tickets, you need to start purchasing them on March 18th. They are $60 in March. In April, the ticket price goes up to $70. So go ahead and get it early. Um, seniors, you get one free ticket. So we got prom coming up here later in the springtime, so we'll uh, be selling some tickets here next month and getting ready for that. So juniors and seniors, get ready, think about prom. Um, class of 2020, the junior class is putting it on, so uh, Miss Atwell doing a ton of the work, and we got uh, Susie Taylor, we got uh, TG helping us, we got uh, Cloyd helping us. So a lot of people uh, pitching in, helping out. Of course, our uh, class officers are awesome too. So. Uh, we're gonna so this year's prom theme is going to be the Roaring Twenties. You know, we thought about it since it's going to be year 2020 and the class of 2020. So that's why we thought about that. And some of the colors are going to be like gold, black, and white for that pop-out color for the white, of course. And the process is really easy of thinking about it. Like I said, year 2020, graduation class of 2020. So yeah, prom theme is going to be Roaring Twenties. Not only am I excited for prom, but I'm also excited for our senior trip tomorrow. Well, I'm a junior, Jackson, but where are y'all going? We're going to Snow Mountain to go tubing. Well, that sounds like lots of fun. I wish I could go. Yeah, well, let's get to all the details from Grayson Ward on this event. We're really excited to be taking a group of seniors this Saturday to Snow Mountain. We're going to go snow tubing and get to play in the snow in Atlanta. We're really excited about that. And we also do have quite a few um, upcoming trips. We're going to be taking um, some seniors to the Braves game in April. And then after that, it begins all of our senior activities with um, class night and um, our senior camp out. And so we're really looking forward to that. So I'm looking forward to snow tubing this weekend. Uh, I heard there's races, and I'm looking forward to beating everyone that goes because I am very fast, uh, especially on snow tubes because, you know, it's, it's a whole bunch of things you need to know how to do, and I am very good at all of them. Um, my goal is to overtake someone's lane. They say it can't be done, but when there's a will, there's a way, and I will find that way. I'm excited. I've never been to Snow Mountain, and I've never been snow tubing, so it's going to be fun being with my friends, one of our last senior trips. I'm looking forward to that yeah. and looking forward to the end of the semester. Now time for an entertainment segment right before we get into sports. Yes, and this one comes also from Coach Green's second block class. Our very own Jesse Fisher and our first installment of Fisher's World. Take it away, Jesse. Hi, my name is Jesse Fisher, and you're watching the first edition of Fisher's World. Today I'm going to be going around Heritage High School to see how much common knowledge Heritage students actually know. Gunner, can you tell me who the first president of the United States is? George Washington. Can you tell me what the three primary colors are? Uh, blue, red, and green. All right, Gunner, that was pretty close. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. What are the three primary colors, Luke? Red yellow, blue. Luke, that's pretty good, man. Can you tell me which North American mammal lays eggs? Perry the platypus. That is correct. Can you tell me, Gunner, what is the closest planet to the sun? Earth. <laughs> All right, Gunner. That's really good. Do you have anything to say about how you deal in these questions? No, not really. All right, Joel. Can you tell me what is the largest planet in our solar system? That'd be Jupiter. Can you tell me what two sides fought against each other in the Civil War? It would be the south of the United States and the north of the United States. All right, good enough. Joel, can you tell me, without a shadow of a doubt, who the 16th president of the United States was? Donald Trump. All right, guys. Well, that's all we have today for Fisher's World. Today's segment was on common knowledge. Did you know any of this? Because some of these guys sure didn't. Thanks for making us laugh, Jesse. Yes, always, but it's time for a commercial break here on the show. Don't go anyway. Sports is next.
What up? Your second best sports anchors are back. But you know what, Logan? We still the cutest anchors on the show. True, Dad. All right, enough of that. Let's see how our boys' basketball team is prepared for Southeast tonight. Here is Madsen Hogue and Tyler Ingham with the preview. So we play uh, Southeast. Uh, they're kind of struggling a little bit this year. They graduated a ton of guys last year, so a bit of a rebuilding year for them. They haven't won too many games, but they've been playing some teams pretty tough as of late. Um, if we're going to go on there, we need to play well. They, they do uh, scramble around on defense quite a bit, so we're going to have to execute well and move the ball together and hunt together a little bit for us to have some success. Uh, and we need to improve our defense a little bit. Uh, the other night it was kind of a little bit weak. We are letting people drive in there, get to the goal. So we'll work on that a lot down there at Southeast. Hopefully we can get a big win. This will be uh, number 10 on the year. So that's, uh, that's big when you can get double digit wins. So that's what we're looking for down there at Southeast. Friday we get on the Southeast and uh, they haven't really won many games this year. They're not that good, but they always, uh, they go 100%. They're a good defensive team. So we can't go full around thinking we got the win. We got to got to go out there, play hard, and play together. Yeah, last uh, region game of the year. Uh, definitely uh, need to go in there and get a big win. Um, obviously, Southeast isn't very good. They're 0-22. But um, played us really tough here, five-point game in the third quarter, and um, can't take anybody for granted. Just uh, got to go in there and execute and get ready for the region tournament in two weeks. Okay, uh, Southeast is still a good team. I mean, we have to go down there and beat them at their home. So. Um, they're 0-22, 0-10 in the region. We beat them by 15 last time. So, I mean, we're just going to have to go in there and just beat them down there. So it's going to be a tough challenge. But Thanks, guys. Hopefully we can pull out a dub tonight against the Raiders. Don't forget about our Lady Generals also playing tonight at 7 at Southeast. Let's see what their game plan is tonight. Here's Zach Brown, Eli Owens, and Jacob Higgins with a preview of tonight's game. Okay, the uh, Lady Generals go to Southeast tonight, and uh, it's really a huge game. We, uh, we're tied for the number five seed right now, so the winner of this will play Lafayette, which uh, we played Lafayette pretty, pretty well both games this year, so we're hoping to get a big win tonight against Southeast, and we'll be the number five seed, and then we're going to turn around and we're going to upset Lafayette in the first round of the region tournament, and we'll be in the state tournament. So uh, uh, huge game. And uh, you know, coming off uh, coming off our last game, maybe we can carry the momentum into tonight and uh, get a big win. We play Southeast tonight. Um, if we win, it's a big game. We get to play Lafette for the fifth seed in the playoffs. Okay, so uh, we're playing Southeast tonight, and it's going to be a good competition, but. We should come out with a win, and then we'll be on to the region tournament, and hopefully we'll have Lafette. Thank you for sports, you guys. But now it is time to get back to the best anchors. Yes, definitely, Jackson. And now on to some mysteries of the Taj. Yes, and this one sounds a little bit creepy. Here's Jeffrey Miner and Daniel Anderson with the new segment. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the second episode of Heritage Unsolved. Today, we'll be discussing D.B. Cooper. Hello. Hi. What do you know about Dan Cooper? Uh, not that much. <laughs> okay, let's get into this. Um... Oh, here we go. Shall we start? Yeah. All right. <laughs> On the afternoon of November 24th, 1971, a man who went by the name Dan Cooper bought a one-way ticket on flight 305 from Portland, Oregon to Seattle, Washington. After receiving his ticket, he boarded the Boeing 727 aircraft and acted, quote, calm and collected. A few minutes after the plane took off, he handed the note to Florence Schaffner, I think that's how you pronounce her name, who was the flight attendant. Thinking it was a phone number, she just put it in her pocket. But the man, still calm, said to her, uh, Miss, you better look at that note. I have a bomb. After demanding $200,000 in unmarked $20 bills, which is a very specific amount of money, they landed in Seattle. When they landed, he allowed all the passengers to get off the plane safely, and it wasn't until after they were all off that they realized that the plane had been hijacked. When it was back in the air at around 8 p.m., Dan Cooper grabbed his $200,000 along with four parachutes and jumped out the back of the Boeing 727 into the black of night and was never seen again. So, do you think he survived the jump? 
parachutes, it, it would seem like he would have. Okay. Give you reasons to why he could have lived. His body was never found. Okay. His body was never found. Neither were the parachutes. And there are some reasons that he couldn't survive. It's because none of the money was found in circulation. And the second reason is he used military parachutes, which supposedly are highly different than re regular parachutes, and only two were working. Yeah, Mil military parachutes actually do cause damage to the person that's wearing them. So for him to have like four, you know, it'd be like four horses just like rip you pieces. If he were like, do, do it like that, <laughs> wouldn't have one parachute on each foot. <laughs> and then um, the last reason he probably should, like couldn't have survived is he jumped at 10,000 feet at night during a rainstorm in 15 degrees Fahrenheit weather and the wind was 170 miles per hour wearing nothing but a suit, loafers, and a trench coat. So what happened was is that he lived, but after that, he started feeling guilty. So he hid the money and the ball. My theory is after he jumped out of the plane, he survived, but on the way down, he lost the money. <laughs> it's like he went down, the money went everywhere, and he was like, ah! That's what I think. There was, I think half of the money or like a quarter of the money was found in 1981 on a beach. It was waterlogged. And also, this sketch right here, if y'all want to look at that, supposedly the um, flight attendant said it's not accurate to what he actually looked like. Dude, so. that's my grandpa. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> did we solve a mystery today? No, we did not. No, but, but, we made some valid points to theories. We did. But hey, maybe we'll solve the next one. Until next time, I'm Jeffrey Miner. And I'm Dan. Goodbye. Thanks for that, you guys. But sadly, that is all the time we have for today's show. But we will be back Tuesday with a brand new show. So until then, stay, stay classy, classy Heritage. Heritage.